I'm Nancy Tingey. I'm originally from England. Um, I settled in Australia with my husband, um, who eventually developed Parkinson's disease. And I, was, I felt that, that I should in some way help. Through her group Painting with Parkinson's, Nancy discovered the profound benefits of art activities on neurological conditions such as Parkinson's. Yeah, Bob was diagnosed with Parkinson's 12 years ago, that's in 1987. And I was able to keep working for 10 years in that time. But um, our lives were dramatically changed. And I had been teaching art for some time. And interested, I was interested in working with people with disabilities. And people who had come to art late in life and thought I'd have a go with starting a group with people with Parkinson's when Bob became president. This was in 1993. And at the end of 1994, we started a group in Canberra in the Botanic Gardens. We had two people to begin with, and then Bob joined because he felt sorry for me, having so few, and another week or two later we had four people. And we exhibited all the work that they had done by Christmas at the Christmas lunch, and the next year we started with 11, and, and soon afterwards 12, and we've always had... 12 people in the group ever since. Because people realised that it wasn't about learning to draw and doing things that were difficult, it was actually about being able to express themselves in paint quite easily on the paper. And what we discovered with Parkinson's was that it's very successful because with painting, unless you're copying something, which we don't do, you're actually taking every movement step by step. So you create a mark on the paper, and then you create another mark, and you create another mark. And it's a very, if you like, an almost linear process. Now, people with Parkinson's disease can cope with that kind of process quite easily. They can't cope with a whole lot of stimuli which is presented at once. So as long as you keep it very simple and you go one step at a time, they can do most things that other people can do. So the painting is a sort of magical unravelling of a, of, of a series of steps. We find that with Parkinson's, people keep going until they feel they finish the work. There's no interruption except perhaps for medication or for some feeling of, um, of tiredness, but that is a continuous process until they finish the piece. Often people with Parkinson's also lose their ability to write, to make their mark. Every mark, everything they put on that paper is a great achievement. The fact that at the end of it we can produce work for an exhibition is absolutely an extraordinary achievement. And that each step that goes into building up those works is, is a step which is saying, I am someone who can create, who can contribute to society again, um, who can make a mark. I think that that's what it is. You, you, you're, you're presented with that piece of paper and you... You decide to do something, and it's all, off the marks grow and grow. Occasionally you might get something like writer's block, but if you just wait a while, something comes into your head, and you make that mark, and you carry on. A possible reason a painting activity is successful for those who have not painted before diagnosis is that Parkinson's patients respond well to new concepts which are challenging and focus the powers of concentration. Um, the experts on Parkinson's say that if you can concentrate on what you're doing fully with Parkinson's, you can do most things that other people can, given time and enough help. So what we do is to construct the program in a way that helps people to concentrate to their maximum. And to do that, we try to create an environment which is very peaceful, which is max with, with very little um, outside noise. Um, if we use music, we use the music to help them to calm down and to become into another, another kind of space. Um, we also try to keep down chatter among the group. So if we go into a Parkinson's um, class, it will begin with people chattering about what's been happening during the week and having their tea and coffee. And then 
um, that comes to an end. And we usually have something like poetry or breathing exercises, some bit of yoga work, um, a little bit of Tai Chi, moving gently. Um, listening to music, perhaps a story, um, some theme which takes them out of the everyday space that they've been in, into another kind of world. So they're in, into a kind of form of meditation and the painting then becomes a meditative process. For Bob, there was the added joy of discovering abilities he didn't know he had. This writhing business with my hands, it's completely involuntary, but uh, I find it goes away when I paint. And uh, so I have on several occasions drawn lines or painted lines on the paper as, as part of a, the, 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 the structural um, building block of, the, of, the, of what I'm trying to do with the with the painting, and, uh, and these things have turned out quite quite well. Uh, one gets um, rather interesting effects of um, uh, a lot of parallel lines of paint, and uh, so uh, I, I have tried that on several occasions, and, and I, I believe it's been one of my more successful. Each of us, at some time or another, feels misunderstood. With Parkinson's, frustration at the diagnosis can be intense. But painting provides an opportunity to let off steam. Well, some of the social problems can be enormous. And so, if you've got somebody like Philip, who's been very active and very, and his whole life geared towards um, precision timing and being at the top of a particular tree, the frustrations are incredible. And although it took a long time to persuade him to come to the painting group, he took to the painting group just as he does to any other activity with great enthusiasm and energy. And his paintings are extremely passionate. They reflect the passion that he was not able to express any longer in other ways. Now this is by um, a painter with Parkinson's who has very strong movements and uh, a number of back problems. So she actually had problems um, really making contact with the paper even. So what she's really doing here is enjoying splashing that paint on with as much vigour as she possibly could and, and getting rid of in inhibitions. And of course in the end it, it looks like a burning bush or whatever, there are, there are associations um, with other objects. But she's really just enjoying seeing what happens when she gets that paint on as forcibly as she possibly can and letting out a lot of that pent-up pent anger. Art also helps people escape the harsh reality by visualising safe havens on paper, as in these paintings about special places by Jack and Sheila. Losing yourself in the work also helps take your mind off the illness. In selecting what to paint and how to paint it, the artists express what is important about their lives and how they feel about their situation. So often when a person comes into the painting group they'll do very ne negative sorts of subjects, perhaps express a lot of anger and use dark colours and, and very um, aggressive movements. But that will tend to um, lighten as the time goes on and they'll tend then to move into a more sort of open, free, colourful space. Mm. Through mark making with art materials, the individuality of each person is respected. No two original paintings are identical. In drawing to music, um, in this instance, we give the person um, with Parkinson's uh, all pastel to hold in each hand. So they're holding the all pastel and perhaps the less dominant hand and in the more dominant hand, it doesn't matter. And the idea is to get both hands going together. And you'll see the effect here is, is quite lovely because you've got layers of um, a mauve coloured pastel with a darker orangey yellow pastel over the top. 
And it, this was largely done with the eyes closed, so that as Norman was working, he couldn't see what lines he was making. And he built up and built up. And it built a kind of um, momentum in the body, if you like, to try and get the nervous system working rhythmically. So that after drawing for a while, um, with um, music in the background, the body is relaxing, it's becoming in tune with the materials, and then they can go on to paint whatever they like, but with a much more relaxed and um, untroubled frame of mind, if you like, a stress-free, hopeful, at the end of doing a drawing session like this. Absorbed in the process, movements free up. One thing leads to another. The rhythmic sweeping movements of the arm and hand while drawing or painting also has a beneficial effect as a form of physiotherapy. The creative activity should be stress-free for people with Parkinson's. Worrying about being able to draw or getting it right will be counterproductive.